Start with Why by Simon Sinek Someone very rightly said, To finish right, it is important to start right. Start with Why is a marvelous attempt by the author Simon Sinek that stunningly puts across a very simple yet intriguing fact for an organization or a leader to reflect on either side of a bell curve. This book sends a message that every emotion cannot be explained through words. Author prompts the readers of this book for a reason as to why did they marry their partner or why do they admire someone who they consider to be very special to them. This book reminds us that we are not friends with every person in our city, yet we immediately make friends with a person from our city if we both meet in a different country. This happens because of the relatability that we draw. Fan clubs or communities are never sponsored by the companies, yet individuals take initiatives to form one. The feeling of belongingness or attachment to an unsaid emotion enables one to take decisions based upon their gut feeling. Love has no rational explanation. It just feels right. It is biology and not psychology. Gut decisions are driven by heart and are of higher quality. At schools, teachers very often tell their students to go with the first instinct. When great leaders are asked for the reason or the logic they applied while making critical decisions in difficult situations, most of them tell they trusted their first instinct. The book gives a good weightage to the role that data plays in making educated and informed decisions. However, at the same time, it shares examples of failures that big giants like Apple experienced after they parted from its creator who had a reason to why Apple even existed. Not all the decisions will go in favor, despite how deep we dive into the data. Assumptions we make, basis our sound research, have the potential to lead us to stray. There is always a chance of missing small but vital details while making data-driven decisions. To prove the importance of why, the author questions that if a company does not know why their customers are their customers, then how can they formulate a strategy to attract more customers? If they don't know why their employees are their employees, then how will they encourage the loyalty amongst their existing employees? In one of the examples shared in this book, he states a fact about a company which never had a complaints department because their why was so strong that every employee that they hired had the same belief system. All the forces in that company were always together to support the same cause and their consumers were their loyal fans. Author says that there are only two ways to influence someone's behavior. You can manipulate or you can inspire them. Very successfully, the author has brought into everyone's notice the existence of the longest war of the last two centuries, the Prize War. And he very well explains the reason for its inception. Parents make use of fear while raising their children. Reason can be awareness. However, eventually that trains our kids to manipulate. Once a kid is now a politician. Politician practices manipulation to raise fear amongst the voters to collect votes. The idea is to tell everyone that if you won't buy this product, or this service from us, then something bad will happen to you. More the manipulations, lesser are the chances for each party to win. Short-term gains have a potential to destroy the health and the wealth of the buyers, the manufacturers and the service providers. On the contrary, aspirational messages can get you to initiate an activity like going to a gym but lack of inspiration can pull you from converting good practices into your daily habits. True leadership means that your people continue to support you for as long as you are on a mission with a vision. Loyalty is what needs to be nurtured. After sharing all these intriguing thoughts, the writer quotes an example from the history of General Motors. 
narrates the car manufacturer's behavior when the foreign car maker Toyota entered the US market. During late 50s, on witnessing a heavy drop in the sales figures, General Motors adapted the strategy of giving rebates to its customers on all their products. The strategy worked and the sales did revive. However, within a short span, the company realized that if it continued to follow the same practice, then their survival will soon be a question. So they opted out of giving discounts and as expected, the sales again dropped. Selling a good quality product is enough and excellence can always be achieved during the process of how you do it. People who try to sell only their what can never create supporters and that can turn into a pain for long-term businesses. A little discount can drift the interest of their customers to a product from a different manufacturer. Having a customer base is good. However, the presence of loyal followership is a blessing. Quoting the example from Harley, the author explains why despite long wait periods, a customer of Harley Davidson never shows a single sign of inclination towards Kawasaki or any other motorcycle manufacturing brand. While sharing the revenue sources of Harley, author reveals that more than 12% of their revenue comes only from their apparels. What is the reason, he asks. Does Harley brand themselves as best jacket or t-shirt manufacturer? No, people are their fans. They buy products from Harley because they believe in what Harley believes. People get Harley's tattoos done on their skin, not because they get some kind of sponsorship, but because they believe in the same values. Logos and trademarks of a company are not just random pictures or signs. Those are the symbol of company's value system. Sometime in the beginning of the millennium, the author of this book made a remarkable discovery that profoundly changed his view towards how this world operates. He figured out that all the great leaders and the great organizations in this world think, act and communicate in exactly the same way which is completely opposite to everyone else. He explains the process through a theory that he calls a golden cycle of why, how and what. He explains why some organizations and leaders can inspire, whereas others resort to manipulations. The author emphasizes the fact that 100% of the population knows the answer to their what. They know what it is that they are doing, what service are they providing, or maybe what product are they delivering. And some of them do know the process of how. However, there are very few of them who do know the reason to their why. They understand that why do they do what they do. Majority of the population do what they do in order to make profits. But they forget that profit or loss is a result and not a purpose or a cause or a belief. Why does the organization even exist? Why should someone even care for their existence? Why are they even wanting to make a difference? These are the questions, the answers to which can help an organization or a leader to create their fan following. The Golden Circle research by the author concludes that most of the common people and companies or businesses think from outside in. But only the inspiring and revolutionary thinkers think from inside out. Henry Ford once said that if I had asked people what they wanted, they would have said a faster horse. In support to the golden cycle rule, the author again quotes an example from Apple and says if Apple were like everyone else, a marketing message from them might have sounded like, we make great computers. They are beautifully designed, simple to use and user-friendly. And then the world would have responded the same way it responds to any other computer manufacturer. But Apple said, everything we do, we believe in changing the status quo. We believe in thinking differently. 
The way we challenge the status quo is by making our products beautifully designed, simple to use, and user-friendly. We just happen to make great computers. While explaining the golden cycle, this book stresses upon the fact that the order is important. Why, how, and what? One must have a clarity of their why. Discipline must be the core value of their how, and there must be a consistency in whatever they do. Author establishes an equation proving that people don't buy what you do. They buy why you do it. And that is the reason people were always comfortable buying Apple products, no matter whether they sold a computer, a phone, a music player, or anything else. Nobody even bothers to look at the fact that they were initially a computer company, just like any of their competitions. The goal is not to do business with everybody who needs what you have. The goal is to do business with people who believe what you believe in. In this book, Simon Sinek has proved the application of golden circle theory through a rich series of great examples. This book summarizes the fact that it is those who start with why that have the ability to inspire those around them or find others who inspire them. To finish right, it is important to start right. Start with why.